Good evening, everyone. Welcome to tonight's meeting. Before we start the meeting, we always have our city clerk read a quote for the week, but I'd also like to point out that, again, we have technical difficulties. This meeting is going to be recorded to start off. When we are able to kick it in live, I will be notified. I'll explain to the public what's going on. There are some charter people working on it right now. It's just the way it goes. I know that uh, Mike Kinsel will get a laugh out of the second one happening. So it's being recorded nonetheless, but it's not being shown live as, as we start. But when it does, at the point that it does, we'll explain that to the public. Madam City Clerk. Thank you, Mayor. If a person has greatness in them, it comes to light not in one flamboyant hour, but in the ledger of their daily work. Thank you very much. Call the fifth regular meeting of the Common Council of Order. Please call the roll. Boren? Here. Bauk? Excuse. Serta? Here. Gisha? Excuse. Hannah? Here. <clears throat> Excuse me. Heidemann? Here. Kittleson? Here. Clionis? Here. Manny? Here. Meyer? Here. Montemayor? Here. Rinfleisch? Here. Ryan? Here. Vanderweel? Here. Verhasselt? Here. And Wangaman? Here. 14 present, 2 absent. Quorum is present. Next, we have the Pledge of Allegiance. President Hannah, would you lead us, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, President Hanna. Next item on the agenda is approval of minutes. President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> I would move for the Please approval rise. of the minutes. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would move for the approval of the minutes. Second. Motion and second to approve the minutes under discussion. There is none. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Public forum, Madam City Clerk. Yes. <clears throat> First on our list would be Henry Capitillo. Mr. Capitillo, could you give me your home address, please? Yes, that, that's uh, 1619 North 38th Street, and that's in the town of Sheboygan, but I'm here representing Home, Inc. Okay, and you will have five minutes, sir. Okay, thank you. I am here today to speak in support of the initiative to find the needed funds to maintain the community policing unit and to speak out against some of the tactics of this administration. For over one year, I have been speaking at various council meetings in order to try to encourage council members to make a serious commitment to fund the Sheboygan Police Department at the levels to keep this city safe. The drastic move that Chief Kirk was forced to undertake to keep within the police department budget is a direct result of this administration's unwillingness to provide the needed funds to the police department. When Chief Kirk made this action known to the public regarding the community policing unit, the mayor was quoted saying the chief was just doing what was necessary to stay within the department's budget and that he was the first department head to do so. After an outcry from various community organizations and taxpayers, the mayor then said he was disappointed that Chief Kirk did not come to the council prior to making decisions to suspend the policing units. Chief Kirk's actions were a direct result of the administration's unwillingness to provide needed funds to the police department. Please take a stand to keep your community safe by making a serious commitment to fund the Sheboygan Police Department at the levels it needs to keep this city safe. To further comment on this administration's continu continued clandestine and cloak and dagger tactics, you only have to look no further than the ambulance service takeover by the city of Sheboygan. Was this the right decision? Was this the right move for the city of Sheboygan? I really do not know because there was not enough information made public to make an educated decision. You are aware that Orange Cross notified the city and the county back in February of 2006 that they intended to extend their contract. This action is documented in the minutes of the February 15, 2006 meeting of the Coalition Ambulance Quality Assurance Committee. It is, just a, is it just a coincidence that there were only three meetings that I'm aware of where city officials made it known that the city was going to take over the ambulance services prior to them making a formal, taking formal action? I am not one bit surprised at how this all came about as it relates to the ambulance issue. 
this administration that expounds about their virtues of open government, but in reality has, on the contrary, done to, to do all to keep the public in the dark on issues, policies, and actions that they set their sights on undertaking or to see in place. About two weeks ago, I read in the Sheboygan Press that the city was going to hold a public hearing on such items whether a business could put a sign at their location or if another business owner could have a vegetable stand in their parking lot and other such items. How absurd it is that the taxpayers of Sheboygan can have public input on whether a business can have a vegetable stand in their parking lot but have little or no public comment on whether the city should take on a multi-million dollar expense such as the ambulance services. I also read in the paper that some older persons were receiving numerous calls from constituents that they did not want the city to take over the ambulance service. Apparently, after the mayor gazed into the, his crystal ball, it was disclosed to him that all the people that had contacted the different older persons were just employees of the hospitals and employees of Orange Cross and not constituents. How disingenuous of the mayor to try to minimize the concerns and opinions of the taxpayers of the city of Sheboygan. You're out of order. Would you please cut down on the insults, Mr. Capitillo? You don't need to throw insults out there, sir. You have done this continuously. I have let it go by. You are out of order. Your Honor, this is what was in the paper. Watch the name calling and, and, the, and the adjective, sir. Even his most loyal supporters from the Taxpayers Alliance, who he appointed to numerous committees, in fact, some of these individuals sit on more committees than some older persons do, now, to find, now also find fault in his tactics. Why should these individuals be so surprised on how the ambulance service issues were decided, since they were probably involved in similar such tactics with the mayors and other things that they wanted to change within city government? I also read in the paper that Alderman Gisha said that he had reviewed the fire department's ambulance services figures as it pertains to making a profit for the city of Sheboygan. If this undertaking is so lucrative, then why was this information not made public? Apparently, whatever financial plans were in place or could be in place are only available to the mayor and certain alder persons. I ask Alder Mangisha, would, would he be a bank official keep, keeping his superiors in the dark to multi-million dollar financial commitments to the bank? I don't think so because he probably would not be a bank employee too long after such action. So why is the ambulance service situation so different? Does not the taxpayer of, the, of Sheboygan deserve to see what serious multi-million dollar financial commitments their public officials are investigating or undertaking? Do taxpayers have to resort to the Open Records and Freedom of Information Act to get public officials to be more forthright in their responsibilities to keep the public informed? I have heard that this is a new council and that things are going to run differently. Apparently, nobody has bothered to inform the mayor about these new changes since he continues to keep the public in the dark on very important issues that will have serious ramifications on this community. Why does this administration continuously keep the taxpayers in the dark? Excuse me, it Henry. Is, Would you like your additional minute? Yes. It is because very few individuals have been willing to question his clandestine tactics. The media is seriously at fault in this particular area. Just look at the weak editorial that the Sheboygan Press had at the citizens takeover or the city's takeover of the ambulance service. They were preaching about how the city should now be working with the county to make sure that the remainder of the county should have adequate ambulance services. Isn't it a bit too late to be writing and preaching about cooperation when all the decisions to take over the ambulance services have been made and nothing can really be done about this issue? Maybe that is why this editorial ran when it did, and not before the ink was dry on the documents to take over the ambulance service by the city. Thank, Thank you me. very much. Oh, Alderman do you have a comment? I'm sorry, those were vitriolic, ugly words with no pass. Thank you. Next on the list Hold is, on, oh, I'm sorry. Me. We have rules of order in this council. I will say that anyone that comes in here and wants to personally attack me or any alderman will be asked to leave, and if they don't, they will be escorted out of here. I will not tolerate personal attacks and assaults and name calling against anyone in this council chamber while this council conducts its business. We welcome public input. We welcome it at a level that's civil, courteous, and respectful. 
and informed and intelligent. Anything short of that, I will not permit. I think that anyone can temper their words to that point. I have just been informed that this council meeting is now live, and I'd like to apologize to the public. There, had been, there has been some technical difficulties, and we're able to show the beginning of this meeting live. Nonetheless, the meeting has been recorded, and when it is aired again, it will be aired in its totality, should be aired in its totality. As of now, we're back live. Thank you. Next speaker. Delcy Johnson. Delcy, can you give me your home address, please? 1306 North 3rd Street, Sheboygan. And you will have five minutes. Thank you. You're welcome. Mayor Perez, members of the council, and fellow citizens. My thanks to Alderman Bourne, Clyunas, Ryan, Verhasselt, and Wangaman for voting no on the ambulance issue and for representing the people who elected you. The speed and manner in which this issue has been handled arouses suspicions. Your constituents still have questions and concerns. I am just one of many who are angry and disappointed and feel that you have not properly considered all of the related issues on something that concerns the health and well-being of the citizens of Sheboygan. We have never heard the city finance director's analysis of the fire department proposal. It was never discussed by either public protection and safety or finance, as would be the normal procedure, but was instead rushed through. Previous committees and councils have spent more time deciding whether people can exercise their dogs in city parks. And it seems that the only rationale for making this change is the profit motive. I don't think my taxes will go down one thin dime because the fire department operates the ambulance service. At a time when we should be downsizing government and outsourcing services, you have made the decision to grow government. Government should not be competing with the private sector and should not be profiting from services to its citizens. The way to reduce the tax burden is to cut expenses and privatize services because government employees always get higher pay and benefits and are less efficient than the private sector. Did you ever consider that maybe the fire department is top-heavy like the police department? Did you ever consider the option of layoffs to help ease the tax burden? Or was this golden plan secretly formulated with the intent of finding work for 15 firefighters that are not needed for normal duties, as posited in a letter you received from an unidentified person, presumably someone in the fire department? If the city eliminated just five positions in the fire department, you would save an estimated $350,000 to $380,000. This would be an actual immediate savings, not a forecast of a dubious profit of $200,000. The fire department is proposing to operate two ambulances 24-7 in the city with a third on standby. Orange Cross has six available in their territory with a seventh on standby. On Friday morning, there were six accidents on Sheboygan South Side, two with injuries. In that case, the fire department may have had to call in their standby ambulance. About half of all firemen live outside the city, and much to my amazement, when they're called in for overtime duty, they get paid overtime wages from the time they are called. But more importantly, now we have a situation where a paramedic may have to drive from Hingham or Howard's Grove or wherever to where the ambulance is located and then proceed to the scene of emergency. That time lapse could mean precious minutes in an emergency situation and could have serious consequences. Contrary to what Commander Herman stated on the council floor Tuesday night, I was not a member of the council when the residency rule was changed. That took place after I left the council. I have always strongly believed that all city personnel should live in the city and help bear the burden of their high wages and extraordinary benefits. We've heard a lot about Orange Cross's million dollar overhead. Orange Cross employs 42 paramedics. If the fire department takes over all of Orange Cross's territory, they would hire a total of 16 paramedics. The salary and benefits for 16 paramedics will be $1,080,000. That's more than double the rate of Orange Cross's overhead. Although the city plans to hire four paramedics to oper operate two city ambulances 24-7, at least 18 or 19 paramedics will be required. And every hour a fireman is assigned to ambulance duty should be accounted in the ambulance cost ledger. If a fireman is assigned to ambulance duty, he cannot be available to answer fire calls. Firemen will need to be 100% dedicated to responding to ambulance calls, even if there is a five-alarm fire. Why the resistance to actually including all personnel costs for operating the ambulances? Is it because the net result would be a loss? I think the taxpayers have a right to know the true expense and revenue figures. 
I received a copy of an email sent by a person from the Oklahoma State University Center for Health Services. Mr. Burke is an EMT paramedic and has worked in various ambulance services in Wisconsin, both publicly and privately. He was never employed by Orange Cross, but did his paramedic internship with them in 2001. He points out, and I quote, that although every medic in the state of Wisconsin must complete the same schooling, when it comes to practical knowledge, this is not the case. Orange Cross has 30 years of experience training personnel and ensuring standards are met. The Sheboygan Fire Department has had a limited role as the first response agency. As a fire medic, there is no real experience caring for these patients once the ambulance door closes, and for many, this will be their first ambulance experience. Also, the ambulances will be posted from fire stations, and if the usual policies of fire departments are in play, they will only respond from their home station. Currently, Orange Cross moves ambulances to ensure total city coverage. For example, if the South Side ambulance is out and no fire department ambulance is moved to replace coverage for the South Side, then there will be excess response times if another ambulance call is received in that area before the ambulance returns. This, in my opinion, is a reduction in patient care. Excuse me, Dulce, would quote. you like your extra Thank minute? You. <clears throat> I am not alone in thinking that you have made a mistake in your hasty action. I am not comfortable that the issue has been completely analyzed. It seems that the primary emphasis has been on the financials. So people wonder if you realize the serious and even tragic situations that could occur because the firemen do not have enough experience in dealing with critical health situations or arrive too late to be helpful. <coughs> Mayor Perez and Alderman, if you can reconsider a, li a liquor license you can reconsider an issue of this magnitude, and I call on you to do so. We're talking about the lives of people that you were elected to represent. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Excuse me. Next would be Lawrence Rupp. Mr. Rupp, can I have your home address, please? Sure. 828 North Water Street, Apartment 6, Sheboygan. Okay, and you'll have five minutes, sir. Thank you. Well, after what we've just heard, what I'm probably going to say is going to sound like dull stuff indeed. But I would like to thank Mayor Perez and the Common Council for giving me this opportunity to speak. On May 21st, the three aldermanic hold was used to delay for approximately one week the consideration of our fire department's bid to become our ambulance service provider. On the 25th, just four days later, the City County Shared Services Committee agreed to study the ambulance service for the City and County of Sheboygan. The Common Council met on May 29th, again, just four days later, and approved our fire department as our new ambulance service provider. My question is, why was the three aldermanic hold used in the first place? Was it because one week earlier, according to the Sheboygan Press, an alder person seemed to think that the process for deciding who was to be our ambulance service was being rushed through? Has or has not the discussion of who should run the Sheboygan Ambulance Service been ongoing for some <clears throat> months? The fire department presented a rather comprehensive plan, as did Orange Cross. Everyone had plenty of time to present their case. Was it, again, according to the Sheboygan Press, that there was another older person who was concerned about patient care if the fire department took over the ambulance service? Are the Orange Cross paramedics that much better than the fire departments? I suspect that we will find out that the fire department is every bit as good as Orange Cross was when it comes to providing appropriate care to our citizens in need of ambulance service. So again, I ask, why was the three aldermanic hold implemented? The lack of a clearly defined rationale for the use of the three aldermanic alder person hold has made me skeptical of its use. Nothing changed except a delay of eight days in the, cert, in the debate and voting of that important <clears throat> local issue. The hold caused some ruffled feathers and a minor delay for the, for the fire department. But the biggest impact the hold has was on the city's taxpayers. A special meeting had to be called. Taxpayer dollars were subsequently wasted. How does wasting taxpayer dollars comport with the fiscal responsibility that, that we, the taxpayers, expect from our alderpersons? 
This unexplained use of the, of the aldermanic hold has undermined my confidence in those alder persons who voted for the hold. I have no problem with their opposition to the fire department being our ambulance service provider. I do have a problem with their using a delaying tactic that costs taxpayer dollars for reasons that remain unclear to me to this very day. I suspect there are other citizens of Sheboygan who are just as concerned and baffled as I am. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Rupp. And lastly, we have Joanne Scribner. <clears throat> And Joanne, can I have your home address, please? 3 Seneca Trail, Sheboygan. Seneca. <clears throat> and can you have the mic kind of really close to your mouth? That way the audience will be able to pick up. Okay. Thanks. This close enough? That'd be great. Okay. I am a taxi driver for Harbor Taxi in Sheboygan. I have worked at Harbor Taxi for one year and ten months. I have worked the 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. shift until just a week ago when I started working nights 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. I am going to read you a little scenario about my work. This scenario will explain why I am thankful for the Sheboygan Police Department patrolling the streets at night and why I am thankful that the new police station on North 23rd is in progress and that it will be state of the art and why I am thankful for Police Chief David Kirk, the entire Sheboygan Police Force, and the four officers I know personally, Tim Patton, Tim McMullen, Randy Haig, and John Winter. Here is my scenario. Sunday night, June 3rd, 2007. Around 6.30 p.m., my uh, manager drives into the North Bowl parking lot right next to my van, the gold van. She looks in the passenger window, opens the door, looks at the pink note that I have posted on the dash on the right side. The note says, the use of the F word or swearing or disrespectful language will not be tolerated in this taxi. Uh, she tells me I did not have her permission to post this note in the taxi, and she crumples up the note and throws it on the front seat. She tells me that customers have called and complained about my little rule, and they have complained about my religious programming on the radio. I tell her I have the right to listen to what I want to listen to, and I have the right to let customers know that I will not tolerate bad language in the taxi. She does not agree with this. She says customers have the right to swear. After all, they are drunk and they have the right to listen to what they want to listen to. She says that that's what the night shift is. Customers who go to the bars and then swear in the taxi. I tell her in no uncertain terms that I will not tolerate profan profanity in my taxi. Since she disagrees with that, we have a yelling match and she leaves. Later in the evening, uh, the uh, other driver dispatches me to the Water Street pub. Four guys get in using the F word before they even get into the van. They do not like my religious programming on the radio and ask me to turn it down. So I do turn it down, but they can still hear it. At the corner of North Water Street and Erie Avenue, the guy in the middle seat right door says, I don't do God, and says he wants to leave the cab. I say, fine. The other three guys also get out. I immediately radi radio my fellow driver to see if he could pick up this foursome. They are going to La Quinta. My uh, fellow driver says he can pick them up, then dispatches me to go to another address for a 10.30 time call. Before I go there, I go to the North Water and Erie uh, intersection where the guy who just got out uh, yells at me from across the street, F you. I ignore him tell the other guy on the intersection that the other harbor taxi will be picking him up momentarily. He seems grateful. I then go to the uh, address I was dispatched to, pick up two women. Uh, my Christian radio station is still on, and they do not complain. I then proceed to La Quinta, where they want to be dropped off. When I get there, I pull up right behind my driver, who is dropping off the foursome from Water Street Pub. They do not look too happy with me, but I say nothing to them, and I drop off the two women. I called the Sheboygan Police non-emergency line shortly after the Water Street pub incident. The lady dispatcher said I had gone beyond the call of duty in getting this foursome picked up by the other driver and that I had a right to listen to what I wanted to listen to and had a right to clean language in the taxi. 
Later, I went to the Sheboygan Police Station, talked to the lady at the window, told her my scenario with Water Street Pub Foursome. She asked me when the incident happened. I said about a half hour ago. She asked me if the customer paid me. I said no, because uh, they didn't pay me. Of course, I only had them for two blocks. I asked her if the lady dispatcher who I talked to could sign something saying she, that had, she had agreed with me. The lady said no, but that the dispatching conversations are recorded. I then left the police station. I then proceeded to the Harbor Taxi office at 2904 Michigan. When I got there, my manager, another manager, and a dispatcher was also there. Uh, they basically told me that I was not allowed to tell my customers that they could not use bad language in the van. They basically told me that I had to turn down my Christian radio station. So I'm wondering, where are my rights with this particular taxi company? Joanne, would you like an additional minute? Yes, please. OK, go ahead. Um, they did not want to lose, of course. They did not want to lose the, the paying customers, of course, especially when, with the senior US Open coming July 2nd through 8th to Whistling Straits. So I kind of uh, argued with them, well, what about my rights? Don't I have rights, too? And another yelling match ensued. Um, my manager stated that she does not believe the F word is swearing. I could not believe that she had just said that, and I totally disagreed with her. Um, she and the dispatcher then said that swearing by passengers, using the F word, uh, being rude and drunk in the cab, obnoxious, and even physical assaults, that's the nature of the night shift. End of scenario. Thank you very much. Thank you. That's it. Thank you, Susan. <laughs> Next item on the agenda is notice of hearing for the vacation and discontinuance of Lot 1 South Pier Platte, that portion of public promenade in the city and county of Sheboygan. Is there anyone here that would like to address the council? Is there anyone that would like to address the council? Is there anyone? President Hanna, motion close. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion to close the public hearing. Second. Motion and second to close public hearing. Under discussion. There is none. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Consent agenda 51 through 526, except 525. Please note that that will lie over. President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> I would move that all ROs be accepted and placed on file, and that all RCs be accepted and adopted. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. Alderman Rinchleis, you're, you're first. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I ask that we pull forward and take a separate vote on item 510 from law and licensing. Pull forward for a separate vote? Yes, please. Would you like to make a motion or? Uh, no, but if, furthermore, I'd like to uh, remove one of the licenses on there and take a separate vote on that one as well. License number 6796. Okay, you're, you're dealing with 510? You're still on 510, okay. yes. We still need a motion to accept an, what are you going to do now? You, I'm sorry. Oh, uh, maybe I want to put the uh, the RC um, move that the reporting committee be accepted and adopted, except for item okay six seven nine six. Okay. So is there a second to that? Second. We probably want to approve it, but we would want Alderman Meyer to abstain from the vote. That's all. Because otherwise we have. We'd like to take a separate vote on that item, or okay. she need to abstain for all the items. From wondering? all the license items. Right. Everything. Because I want to take it separate so she can. You stay from just the one. Okay. You can do it simpler, but that's okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you want, you're, you're making a motion to accept an adopt reporting committee, accept that item. Accept there. that item, correct. Everybody had get that? Okay. And there was a second, was it? Second. Okay. Second, okay. Under discussion. Okay. Uh, Alderman Kittleson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Can you tell us which, it's, 
Can you tell us again which one it is? 6796. 6796, and located on which page? Home and Reflash? It's on you... one, one, two, three, four, five. It's for Meyer, Victoria L. Alderman Meyer. Very good. Thank you. And Alderman Meyer, are you going to be abstaining from that? I will abstain from that okay. particular license order. Okay. Any more discussion? Clarifications? Are we okay with that? Ready to take the vote? Please call the roll. You do need a roll call? Mm -mm. No? We got another comment. Alderman Just Rich. to clarify, Mr. Mayor, we're voting on all of them right now, minus that one, or are you voting on that one? We well, wouldn't. the way you stated it, we're voting on all except... Except for that one. Okay. Yeah. All right. So we don't need a roll call. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Any opposed? Motion carries. Alderman Rich. Aye. Aye. Still on. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd like to uh, put um, license number 6796, Meyer Victoria L, um, uh, be accepted and adopted as well, the license to be accepted. Motion and second. 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 Under discussion. There is none. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. One abstention. Okay. So we're back to... 526 with the exception of 525 which lies over and except in 510 which has just been taken care of. Are there any other actions that would like to be taken by the council? There being none, please call the roll. Boren? Aye. Bo oh, I'm sorry. Bob is not here. Uh, Serta? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunis? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Rinfleisch, Aye. Ryan, Vanderweel, Verhasselt, and Wangaman. Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. Communications and petitions 527 through 529 to be referred. Report of officers 2, 530, lies over. 531, okay, am I going to? Um, go ahead. 531 through 549 to be referred. Resolutions introduced three, 550 by Alderman Vanderweel, Rinfleisch, Ryan, Serta, and Kittleson, authorizing the appropriate city officials to execute the 2007 Justice Assistance Grant Program Award Memorandum of the Understanding between the City of Sheboygan and the County of Sheboygan. Alderman Vanderweel. Thank you, Your Honor. I move to put the resolution upon its passage. Motion and second to put the resolution upon his passage. Any discussion? There being none, please call the roll. Serta? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunis? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. And Boren? Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. 551 by Alderman Verhasselt, Meyer, Heidemann, Gisha, and Montemayor adjusting the pay range midpoint for all non-represented classifications by 3.7 for the year 2007. Alderman Verhasselt. Thank you, Your Honor. I ask that this resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second to put 551 upon its passage. Under discussion. There being none, please call the roll. Hannah. Aye. Heidemann. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Clayunis. Aye. Manny. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Rinfleisch. No. Ryan? No. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? No. And Serta? Aye. Ten eyes, four no's. Motion carries. 552 lies over. 553, 54, and 55 to be referred. Report of Committee 7. 556 and 57 to be referred. Report of committees 8, 558 by finance recommending authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 2007 budget. President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would uh, make a motion that the <clears throat> report uh, 0708 um, 
be put upon his passage. Second. A motion to accept and adopt report of committee and put the resolution upon his passage. Second, under discussion. There being none, please call the roll. Heideman. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Clionis. Aye. Manny. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. Ryan. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Verhasselt. Aye. Wangeman. Aye. Boren. Aye. Serta. Aye. And Hannah. Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. Report of committees 9559 by salaries and grievances. Recommending repealing and recreating Chapter 86 of the Sheboygan Municipal Code relating to planning and zoning so as to add the city engineers and city tourism functions to the city development department. Alderman Verhassel. Thank you, Your Honor. I'd like to make a motion to accept and adopt this report of committee and put it upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. Alderman Serta. Thank you, Your Honor. I'm wondering if somebody could provide some clarity as to why it's going to be housed under the city development department. Sure. Paulette, would you like to step up forward? There are a couple of more aldermen wishing, wishing to speak. Would you, would it be okay if we get... Okay, Paulette. Alderman Ryan, is that okay with you too? Thank you, Mayor and Common Council. Um, yeah, as I think this all occurred, kind of the discussion and then the subsequent meetings and... Um, the information that I provided when Tom Holton, the Director of Public Works and Engineering, resigned. Um, I had discussions with uh, Mayor Perez and um, Alderperson Susha at the time when we were meeting individually as department heads to discuss recommended changes to our table of organization. Um, and so it was, there was a discussion was brought up when we talked about engineering being a part of planning and development. And I think that was really spurred by the fact that I had worked so closely with Tom Holton on a lot of projects that involved engineering. And um, I think that what I did then was I looked at other communities, and although it's not the, the norm in the state of Wisconsin at all, um, there are a lot of other communities throughout the United States where development and engineering are combined and uh, along with building inspection, zoning, planning. And it, it does appear to function well from the standpoint of you really work towards that one point of contact and a good, um, good communication and really moving projects forward on the development side. You know, and then, of course, not forgetting that you know, engineering and how engineering you know, is um, important in and of itself um, from that regard there will still be a city engineer. It's just a matter of who that city engineer reports to. Any other questions? Okay, thank you, Paulette. We have Alderman Kittleson. Thank you. I think, thank you, Your Honor. Paulette, kind of, sort of, I, I was just wondering why we were also making this change, and, and um, I, she answered my questions. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Alderman Ryan. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I'm rather baffled by the whole thing. I, I can understand uh, engineering and development going together. Um, uh, Paulette Enders does a great job. I work with her on redevelopment um, and several other items that come up. But it seems that the engineers design it and Public Works builds it. Normally engineering, your engineering and your, your building go together. Um, Paulette does an excellent job. I mean, she, she is worth every penny that the city pays her, and I'm sure much more. Uh, but since uh, Pete Fullerton left the department, I don't know how she can possibly, without having another person on the uh, uh, development side uh, that is the caliber that, that Pete Fullerton was, I don't know how she's going to be able to handle all of this. Uh, so I, I think this should be thought through uh, and, you know, look at what are the benefits of the big picture uh, before this is done. I'm kind of, I'm not clear on, on where the benefits are to this right now. Thank you. Alderman Montemayor. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, thank you, Alderman Ryan. Those were precisely the questions we had at the salary and grievance meeting. And Paulette Enders and Engineer Balky made it very clear to us at salary and grievance that this would aid them and make it easier for them to work and more quickly. 
in, in the past, quite frankly, and I think all of you will agree with me, we had sort of a superman doing the, the city engineering and the public works. Uh, there was a very, very um, interesting structure uh, with a very capable, competent, skilled individual. That situation no longer exists. Uh, uh, you know that I, I have talked with uh, both uh, David Beeble and Bill Balky. Uh, they're in agreement. They have no objection to that. Um, that's, so I ask you to consider that, too. Any other discussion? Please call the roll. Oh, sorry. Hold on. Alderman Kittleson. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I guess um, I'm not real sure myself at this time that, that I want to... Uh, put the city engineering under the city development as well. Um, I, I, I'm very much for the city tourism functions to be kept with city development. Um, so I'm wondering if, if um, uh, the vote maybe could be separated on, on these two items for city engineering and city tourism. Thank you. Alderman Ryan. Thank you once again, Your Honor. Um, I, I agree with uh, Alderperson Kittleson on that regarding the, uh, the, the tourism. And truthfully, I have nothing against engineering being under development. I just think that right now, uh, development, uh, Paulette has her hands, has her, her hands so full uh, of, of projects that go on that I don't see how uh, one person can, can, can do this right now uh, to have another department under her along with everything she's got. I mean, she's, she does a phenomenal job for the city, but I hate to see her get more bogged down when her primary purpose is to sell this city is to develop this city. Mm -hmm. Thank, Thank you. you. Paulette, would you please come up? I'm going to ask you a question. It's very interesting for all of us to speculate to say that you cannot handle an additional responsibility. The question would be, can you and do it effectively? Absolutely. And I'm confident in our interim city engineer and the work that he does and um, you know, he's done a terrific job between the time that Tom left and now in managing that department. I think it'll be a, you know, a, a, a very good, um, you know, marriage between the, the two departments. And then also we will be hiring, and we're close probably, you know, I hope within the next week that we can have an offer to somebody to fill. It's not Pete's position, but it's an economic development manager, and that will greatly assist in the work that I have to do. Okay. Thank you, Paulette. That will be it. Alderman Clayness. Thank you, Your Honor. I appreciate everything that's been said about you know, her having too much. I also think, though, that if she's in, if this uh, engineering is in her department, she has less hurdles to go in terms of communication. The person is with her, working with her directly. I think there's a lot of development going on in the city, which requires engineering advice and engineering direction. And I think that if this person is working with Paulette in her department, I think the communication will be smoother and more efficient. Thank you, Alderman Cleveland. Sec your third time, Alderman Cleveland. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, I guess I just I have a problem with it simply because I think 50 or 75 years from now, um, engineering uh, or, will, or the city engineer will still be with the Department of Public Works. When I did some research on this, I found that within the state, within our state, most city engineers are with the Department of Public Works. And so I'm just, I'm, I'm looking at it, uh, the big picture years from now, uh, what the plan is that, that those are where those positions usually fall into that area. And so I'm, I am, uh, uh, I, I am concerned about it, and I, I just I feel that the city engineering should stay with the D, with the DPW. So thank you. Thank you, Alderman Verhessel. Thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> Again, at being chairman of the Salary and Grievances Committee, I did take some opportunity to speak with all the affected parties, Mr. Balky, Mr. Beeble, uh, Ms. Sanders, and, and others. And again, this is largely semantics. I mean, when it comes down to their day-to-day -day routine, is not going to change much, if anything. I think uh, Paul Lett will take on some small and additional responsibilities as far as approvals and authorization and the reporting process, but the day-to-day -day routines are largely unchanged. And the net benefit is better communication. I think the benefits far outweigh the negatives in this case. Thank you, Alderman Hassel. Alderman Serra. 
Thank you, Your Honor. Wondering if um, Alderperson Verhassel could elaborate too if there's going to be any compensation for these additional responsibilities, and then also a follow up from Ed Surick, our HR director, to confirm that. Alderman Verhassel, do you have any comments, sir? Yeah, I'd like to defer that to Ed Surick if at all possible. Yes, please. Mr. Surick, would you please come up? I guess the question is, has there been discussion regarding compensation? And uh, I have discussed with Paula, and, and we're, we're kind of wait and see. There really isn't. I don't have an answer yet. So. Okay. <laughs> That's all I have. Thank you. Alderman Ryan, this is the third time. We're going to allow one more. Thank you, sir. I greatly appreciate that. Um, I just, I, it, it seems to me that, that we're, changing something if it's just a matter of communication between engineering and development um, I believe engineering and development will remain in two separate buildings such as they are now correct I don't know I would I would or are we talking about moving departments uh, I don't I don't see how this makes a lot of sense to me um, so, you know I how, how is communication going to improve if we're still in two different locations? You're still working on the same projects. It, it seems to me I'd, I'd, I would be much more comfortable if there was a bigger, uh, uh, more of a clarification of, of what direction this is, is, is going. Why, you know, why are we doing this? It, doesn't, uh, it just doesn't make a lot of sense to me right now that we would do this just to, for a matter of, of uh, improved communication. Well, I, I, I'm just not comfortable with it, sir. I just don't know what the purpose of it is, and, and that's what I'll I don't tell you, understand. I'll tell you, to be improved communication means a lot. Uh, efficiency be, means a lot. Um, it would weigh in seriously with me if we had the effective, as Alderman Rehassel has stated, the effective individuals were against it. They're not. Um, I don't see where, where we would uh, object to that if the parties that are part of that organization, that structure, are saying we're okay with it. We, we can make it work, and we, we will make it work. So, anything else? There is none. Please call the roll. Kittleson? No. Clayunas? Yes. Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? No. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Wangaman? No. Boren? Aye. Serta? No. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? No. Nine eyes, five no's. Motion carries. 560 by salary and grievances recommending repealing and recreating Division 2 of Article 4 of Chapter 2 of the Sheboygan Municipal Code so as to remove the city engineering function from the Department of Public Works. Alderman Verhassel. Thank you, Your Honor. Again, I'd like to make a motion to accept and adopt this report of committee and pass the ordinance. Is there a motion and second. This is just a follow up to the action that you just took. Any discussion? There is none. Please call the roll. Clayunas? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? No. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Wangaman? No. Boren? Aye. Serta? No. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? No. Kittleson? No. Nine eyes, five noes. Motion carries. 561 by salary and grievances recommending providing for the appointment of the city engineer by the director of planning and development. Once again, just to follow up to the action. Alderman Verhassel. Thank you, Your Honor. Again, I'd like to make a motion to accept and adopt this report of committee and pass the ordinance. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. There being none, please call the roll. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? No. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? Wangaman? No. Boren? Aye. Serta? No. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? No. Kittleson? No. Clayunas? Aye. Nine eyes, five noes. Motion carries. Ordinances introduced 10, 562 by Alderman Hannah, Boren, Clayunas, Bauk, and Gisha amending the code so as to provide for a petty cash fund for the municipal court. Alderman Hannah, we need a motion to suspend. Yes, I'd like to make a motion to suspend. Second. There's a motion and a second. Is there any objection? There is none. 
Then we need a motion to pass, put the ordinance upon its passage. I would make a, mo a motion that the ordinance be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second, under discussion. Alderman Vanderwill. Thank you, thank you, Your Honor. I was just wondering if uh, any other department has this and, and why this was requested. I don't know. I, uh, is there anyone here that can answer that question? Susan, please step up. I need, I need a motion to open the floor to a, a non-department head. Second. Okay. Motion second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Please step up. Thank you. One of the departments that I oversee, the senior center, does have a petty cash fund. And I can speak as to the senior center um, because it's a human service organization and they're meeting and dealing with people. Sometimes they need things that they don't have on hand. And it was becoming too cumbersome for Wendy Schmitz, my staff member, to put it on her own credit card and then wait for the city to repay her. Any, uh, thank you, Alderman Vanderwill, is that? Yes, thank you. Alderman Wright, did you need to address Susan? No. no. Oh. Please do. Um, I think we should uh, let the public know this uh, petty cash fund is $100. It's, it's not like we're talking a phenomenal amount of money. And uh, it's my understanding that none of the departments in the city have credit cards, uh, which probably is a big hindrance in doing business in the city because uh, if you have to jump through 20,000 hoops, to get a purchase order to buy a ballpoint pen, uh, it's very time consuming and cumbersome. So I think that uh, that should probably be looked at, of course, with uh, very close scrutiny on those credit cards. Thank you. Thank you. You can give us some more information if you'd like. Okay. Uh, Madam City Clerk. Um, the late last week, the municipal court has taken over all receipts. All the fines coming in are no longer being taken at the finance department or the police department. That's why they need the petty cash. So they'll be doing it all up here in limited hours. Okay. Everybody okay with that? Any further questions? Vice President Bourne. Thank you, Your Honor. Just in follow-up a little bit on that topic, I had a discussion uh, last week with uh, Finance Director uh, Rich Gebhardt, and we're also looking at uh, bonding these uh, people in the uh, municipal court that are going to be handling the money. The judge is currently bonded but not the employees. So uh, Mr. Gebhardt is going to come up with some figures at bonding these people at different uh, dollar amounts, and we'll be taking a look at that in finance. So it, it is related to this. Okay. Thank you for the explanation, Alderman uh, Bourne. Anything else? There being no more discussion, we will call the roll. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Bourne? Aye. Serta? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann, aye. Kittleson, Clionis, and Manny. Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. 563 lies over. Matters laid over at 11. 318 RO number 90708 by the City Plan Commission recommending vacating part of lot 1, South Pier Platte. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. I move to accept and adopt the RO and the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second, under discussion. There is none, please call the roll. Montemayor, Aye. Rinfleisch, Aye. Ryan, Aye. Vanderweel, Aye. Verhasselt, Aye. Wangaman, Aye. Boren, Aye. Serta, Aye. Hannah, Aye. Heidemann, Aye. Kittleson, Clionis, Manny, Aye. and Meyer. Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. 492, resolution number 190708, by Alderman Hanna, Born, Clayunas, Bauk, and Gisha, authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 2007 budget. Alderman Hanna. Thank you, Your Honor. I would move that the resolution be put upon his passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. There is none. Please call the roll. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Serta? Hannah, Aye. Heidemann, Aye. Kittleson, Clionis, Manny, Aye. Meyer, Aye. and Montemayor. Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. 4105, General Ordinance Number 50708 by Alderman Verhasselt, Montemayor, Heidemann, Gisha, and Meyer amending the code so as to change the job description and job code of the laborer 
Police Department. Alderman Verhassel. Thank you, Your Honor. Again, I ask that this uh, ordinance be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. There being none, please call the roll. Ryan. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. For Hasselt. Aye. Wangaman. Aye. Warren. Aye. Serta. Aye. Hannah. Aye. Heideman. Aye. Kittleson. Kleunis. Aye. Aye. Manny. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. And Rin Fleisch. Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. Attorney McLean. Thank you, Your Honor. I um, hate to go back a ways, but uh, I just double check my uh, cheat sheet here on document uh, 561, the, uh, the charter ordinance. That required a uh, two-thirds vote of all the members, and, uh, which would have been 11, and only received nine positives. So it didn't pass. Did not pass. Excuse me. Attorney McLean, 561, which one is it? 561 did not pass. Is there any one of the aldermen that voted no that wishes to reconsider? The other two were passed. Is there anyone? Alderman Rinfleisch? No, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, to clarify, though, the 559 and 560 did pass with a simple majority? 559 and 560 passed with the simple majority, that's right. Okay, and 561 fails, where does that leave us? Um, it, it leaves uh, you in a situation where currently the public works director appoints the city engineer, and that would be the case, even though the city engineer would be in the planning department. Okay, thank you. Alderman Ryan. Thank you, Your Honor. So basically what we're saying here, uh, the city engineer will be under city development that is passed on these other resolutions here. However, they will not be appointed by the development director. They would be appointed by the director of public works. That's that doesn't great. make any more sense than the original thing did to me, so I will rescind my vote on this. Well, I need a motion to reconsider. I will make a motion to reconsider in that case. Is there a second? Second. Second. Under discussion. There is none. All in favor of the motion to reconsider, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? No. One no. Just a second. Then I need from someone a motion, a motion to accept and adopt 561 and put the ordinance upon its passage. Mm -hmm. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. There being none, please call the roll. And we need how many votes? 11? Need 11. I need Fair 11 votes. votes. So two would have to reconsider. Wangaman? No. Boren? Aye. Serta? No. Hannah? Yes. Heideman? No. Kittleson? Aye. Kleunis? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. 11 ayes, 3 noes. Motion carries, 3 quarters vote. Thank you very much, Alderman. And thank you, Attorney McLean, for catching that. We were on... 4105. 4105. We just finished that one, I think. And was, was there a motion already? I already have the roll call for that, so yes. So we're done with that? Yep. 105. 4106, General Ordinance Number 60708 by Alderman Verhassel, Montemayor, Heidemann, Gisha, and Meyer amending the code so as to delete the current and create an update position of Finance Director, Treasurer. Alderman... For hassles. Thank you, Your Honor. I ask this, that this ordinance be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. There is none. Please call the roll. Boren? Aye. Serta? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heideman? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Kleunis? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. For Hasselt? Aye. And Wangaman? Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. 4107, General Ordinance Number 70708 by Alderman Verhassel, Montemayor, Heidemann, Gisha, and Meyer amending the code so as to add a temporary part-time assistant to the Senior Activity to the Senior Activity Center 
supervisor to the mayor's office senior center table of organization. And I believe that's the one that's being paid by friends of seniors, no? Okay. Alderman for Hassel. Thank you, Your Honor. Again, I ask that this ordinance be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion, Vice President Bourne. Thank you, Your Honor. You asked, you asked for a clarification on whether that was being paid for by the... Yes. It, it is or it isn't? It is, it is being no. paid? No. It's not? Can we, again, we need to ask uh, Susan, so I need a motion to open the floor. Susan. Second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Susan, please step forward. The position you were referring to that's being paid by the Friends of the Senior Center is for the volunteer coordinator, and we already have that person in place. This position, um, our activities planner resigned, and she was at 25 hours a week. As you recall, Boris Frank was in here, the consultant that the Friends of the Senior Center um, hired to come in and evaluate, and he is suggesting some organizational structure changes. And so I didn't want to put on another position only to have to lay them off later. So uh, we approached salary and grievances about instead of replacing the activities coordinator, all we're doing is adding an extra set of hands to um, the senior center through the end of the year. And so this person will be temporary and part-time until the Commission on Aging decides what direction they want to see us go. Is that uh, Vice President Bourne? Is it okay? Anybody else? Okay, thank you, Susan. Mm -hmm. Okay, we will call the roll. <clears throat> Serta? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heideman? Aye. Kittleson? Clionis? Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhassel? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Bourne? Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. 4 1 20, General Ordinance Number 807. 08 by Vanderweele, Rinfleisch, Ryan, Serta, and Kittleson relating to regulatory signs so as to add stop signs for east-west traffic on David Avenue at South 20th Street and South 21st Street. Alderman Vanderweele, would you like to take both? Yeah, thank you, Honor. I'll take uh, item number 4121 as well because they're related, and I'll put both general ordinances upon their passage. Motion and second. Under discussion. There be none. Please call the roll. Hannah, Aye. Heideman, Aye. Kittleson, Clayunis, Manny, Aye. Meyer, Aye. Montemayor, Aye. Rinfleisch, Aye. Ryan, Aye. Vanderweel, Aye. Verhasselt, Aye. Wangaman, Aye. Boren, Aye. and Serta. Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. Other matters authorized by law 564, a resolution by Alderman Ryan approving the terms and conditions of the contract for lease of land and accompanying ground lease between the Redevelopment Authority and Mueller Development Company, LLC. Alderman Ryan, we need a motion to suspend first. Thank you, Your Honor. I uh, move for a motion to suspend the rules. Is there any objection? There is none. Please proceed. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second to put 564 upon its passage under discussion. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, this is a standard ground lease for the uh, South uh, South Pier District. Uh, we'll add approximately a half million dollars to the tax base to the TIF district right now. It's a good thing. Uh, we're suspending the rules to get the ball rolling. We need to get as much built down there as quickly as possible. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Ryan. Any other discussion? There is none. Please call the roll. Heideman. Aye. Kittleson. Clionis. Manny. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Rinfleisch, Aye. Ryan, Aye. Vanderweel, Aye. Verhasselt, Aye. Wangaman, Aye. Boren, Serta, Aye. and Hannah. Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. 565, an RO by the Board of Contractors Examiners submitting applications for building contractors' licenses. Alderman Kittleson. Mm -hmm. I need just a motion to accept. Oh, okay. I'll, I'll, I'm sorry, Alderman Rinfleisch. Yes. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I make a motion to uh, accept the uh, RO and uh, that it be accepted and placed on file. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. There is none. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. 
566 will be referred to Municipal Court Advisory Committee. 567, a resolution by Alderman Ryan Bauk ordering a hearing on the vacation and discontinuance of the east-west alley located within Block 105 of, of the original plat of the City of Sheboygan located between North 7th Street and North 8th Street and between Ontario Avenue and Niagara. Alderman Ryan. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. I put, ask that the uh, resolution ordering a hearing be put upon its passage. Motion to second. Under discussion. Uh, if I may, Your Honor, this is uh, to vacate the alley in order to go ahead with the uh, development of the Grand State Hotel on, uh, on 7th and Niagara. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Ryan. Any further discussion? There is none. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Moving along, 568 will be referred to City Plan Commission. 569 will be referred to City Plan Commission. 570 will also be referred to City Plan Commission. 571 will be referred to City Plan Commission. 572, a resolution by Alderman Ryan and Bauk directing a public hearing regarding the change in, or in zoning classification of a parking lot from Class NR6, Neighborhood Residential 6, to Class Neighborhood Commercial Classification. Alderman Ryan. Thank you, Your Honor. I ask that the, uh, res the resolution uh, directing the public hearing be put upon its passage. Is there a second? Second, under discussion. Just same issue. With the same issue. Thank, Thank you. you. There being no more, all in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. 573 will be referred to City Plan Commission. 574, 575, and 76 will be referred to City Plan Commission also. Other matters, Attorney McLean. Thank you, Your Honor. 577 is an RO by the Finance Director Treasurer submitting the Harbor Center Marina balance sheet from operations dated April 30, 2007, as submitted by Skipper Marine. That will be referred to Marina and Harbor. 578 is communication from Mary Murphy, Secretary of St. Peter Claver Parish Council, requesting a change in parking in front of the church building on South 11th Street to be a loading zone sign. That will be referred to Public Protection and Safety. 5-79 is a communication from Beverly Schaefer regarding the intersection of 7th Street and Pennsylvania Avenue that was going to be approved in public protection and safety for a blinking light rather than the traditional red, green, and amber stop light currently in place and wondering what is happening. That will also go to public protection and safety. 580 is a resolution to authorize the transfer of appropriations in the 2007 budget. That will be referred to finance. 581 is submitting as a matter of record a communication from Mary Jo Tittle, Executive Director of Family Resource Center, Sheboygan County, advising that the Literacy Council of Sheboygan County, Inc. and the Family Resource Center of Sheboygan County, Inc. have agreed to merge effective July 1, 2007, with the programs and activities of the Literacy Council becoming a part of Family Resource Centers of Sheboygan County, Inc. That will lie over. 582 is an RO by the City Clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending June 30, 2008 and June 30, 2009. That will be referred to Law and Licensing Committee. 583 is an RO by the City Clerk submitting the Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources 2007 Environmental Fee Statement for Payment. That will be referred to Public Works. 584 is a resolution authorizing the appropriate city officials to pay the required environmental fees enforced by the Wisconsin DNR for the Sheboygan Wastewater Treatment Plant. And that will be referred to Public Works. Thank you. That was 584? You said that 584. Was, that was 584. Okay. Anything else? Nope. There's a motion in the, to adjourn. Second. All in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed? We stand adjourned.